Hey, welcome back to Woods Creek Workshop. My name is Yuchul. Today, we're going to tackle another lathe improvement project, specifically the coil lock. It just never worked right from the beginning, and uh, once I show you, you know, how it's made and designed, you'll understand why. Now, what I'm going to do is not my original idea. Uh, I saw Stefan Gosfinter uh, make this improvement on his previous lathe, so he gets all the credit. So. Let's get to it. Let's quickly take a look at the current situation. So this is the lock that's supposed to lock the quill. Unfortunately, it comes to an abrupt stop right there. Won't go any further and it doesn't lock very well. You can, I can easily still turn and extend and retract the quill. So we want to come up with a new mechanism that replaces this and there's one design that Stefan Gotzvinter showed on his old lathe one prior to the one he has currently where he placed a metal plate here that is slit with the locking mechanism a lever and that's what I'm gonna do first thing we're gonna do is square this thing up so we can hold it properly I took the quill out of the tailstock to show you how this particular lathe works. And I know I'll get asked this question, so I'll just tell you, answer you in advance. This lathe is Jet GH uh, 1340W. It's their gearhead 13x40W means three phase. Um, so this is the quill, the slot here that you see right here is the bottom okay this is the handle side this is the taper for Morse taper 3 MT3 so like I said this is the bottom and this piece right here slides right in that groove and that's what keeps the quill from turning rotating but that rests also rests on this locking mechanism. Now, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it is turned off center to give you that uh, lever action. And this, well, I don't know what you would call it, uh, rise in that groove. Again, this is upside down. And since it's off center, when you lock it, it would push this uh, middle piece against that slot and lock it in place but the way they made it their means of adjusting the how much force it gets placed see that at the end that's nothing more than that's nothing more than a, a bead of weld a couple beads of weld and uh, that rests against this, right? And you can see, camera, focus. You can see that indentation right there. So this piece is pretty soft. And we all know the, the welds can be pretty hard. So there are two uh, things that are preventing uh, this from working properly one it's hard to control the size of the weld precisely to get the right amount of tension two since this is soft and this is well this is not that hard but no matter how you know even if you get this accurate it will dig into that shaft right there and you lose that correct geometry so we're gonna I mean that that is just a poor design execution 
Okay, so I identified location where I want to center the hole. Uh, again, I'm leaving some extra meat around the edges to finalize the final dimension once I get this hole bored out. Okay, I got my Narex boring head mounted on it. Let's see if it fits. Yep. Fits. With just enough clearance. I don't want it sticky. Uh, yep, that's good. Now, one of the concerns I have is once we slit this, you know, whether it's going to close up or open. We'll just have to deal with that. Alright, so I got the tailstock mounted. Um, you're probably wondering what is going on. Remember, I'm machining off this face right here. But I couldn't mount this lengthwise along the table because it's too wide. The base of the tailstock is too wide and I just won't be able to put any uh, uh, cl uh, clamp it down. Um, because it would cover up all the T-slots on the table. Couldn't flip it around because this piece right here would just uh, stick out too much. I think. Yeah. And the second reason is um, I needed to indicate off of the quill. Um, and if I have it flipped around and have a quill facing this way, there's no way I could reach way out here to indicate off of the quill. Anyway, this is the best I could do. Um, I indicated close to the top as possible. I say close because it is uh, engraved with letters. It has all the graduation. So it's a little bit off center, but that's okay. But I uh, indicated off the top. I also indicated off the side to make sure it's not twisted or whatever. I had to put two thousandths shim underneath the whole entire rear. I got it down to two tenth of a thousandth which is better than I could hope for. Okay we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go really light. Light cut. We're not in a hurry here. Remember this is the arbor that I made in the last video made the shank a little long because I didn't know how far down I was going to have to move. Now you know why. Alright guys, something didn't feel right so I stopped and uh, ran the indicator again and the tailstock had moved. So um, there really is no good way to do this, at least with given limited number of hold downs I have. But uh, I added uh, hold downs here and down at the end to prevent it from slipping. That should do it. Uh, we'll give it a shot.
Okay, now we did get the entire surface that we need flat. Uh, there are some chatter marks, but so what we need to do is take a light finishing pass, really light. Now that the front is all machine flat, we'll take a file and quickly soften out the edges. Now that hole, the edge is pretty sharp, so we want to soften that out too. Arkansas stone. These are wedge shaped, uh, Amazon around 20 bucks. This is really handy for a lot of things around the shop. Now even though we're not going to be using the original lock, we have to put this back with this centerpiece because this part right there guides and prevents the quill from turning. And I have a confession to make. The first piece, this is the one I made, right? You saw me make it. I didn't like how it fit. I mean, it fits fine, but it's, I intentionally machined one and a half thousandths bigger than the quill. And I didn't, because I didn't want it too uh, sticky. But I don't like how that feels. It just feels a little more loose than I like. So, I made another one. Fits really good. Maybe half a thousand. I was losing sleep over it, so I decided, well, I guess I just better go ahead and make it then. So, we're gonna have to trim this to the size. So, since this is an uh, oversize, I put this uh, on the quill and made some rough measurements uh, so we're gonna rough out and remove some of the materials and we'll put it back on the quill and finalize Why is it whenever I'm trying to record the heater turns on? And I just use extra magnetic base. It holds in place. Nice and level on top. See it's kind of hard to match it up because the casting's all rough, you know? So I'm going to have to mark where that goes, because it goes in right here. Uh, the top looks good, this side looks good, the right side looks good. question is, how low do I bring it down? How low do I go?
Okay, so I cut off the bottom on the bandsaw. There was a good three quarter of an inch, so. And we're just gonna square it up now. Okay, it's time to drill the hole. This hole's gonna go all the way through. Uh, I got a, a short parallel uh, bar underneath it so I don't hit the bottom of the jaw, bottom of the vise, I mean. Um, so we're gonna indicate off of it. We're gonna come in, this is half inch plate, so we'll split that, but we'll come in uh, 330 second, 332,000, I'm sorry, in from the end. That'll split the distance between here and there. The lever I got is M6 thread. Uh, so the top portion is going to have a clearance hole that is letter G drill bit. Bottom will be number 8. So we're going to start with number 8, go all the way down, and then we'll drill with the letter G halfway down, and then we'll split it. So deep hole, small bit, we're going to lube it up pretty good. So I don't have a long drill bit for this size. Once I go pe <clears throat> deeper than the flute, the drill bit isn't capable of pushing out the chips. So. I need to keep on backing it out often so the chips would clear. Not the best setup, but that's the drill bit I got. Okay, so the bottom of the bit, not the point, but the bottom here is touching the top. I lock the quill. And I'm going to zero out the ZDRO. We're going to come up uh, 1.602. You know, uh, every good plan, just you run into obstacles. I completely fail to take into consideration the fact that the tap is only that long and the shank is thicker so I can't actually go down to the middle of it now I have two options one is grind the shank down the second is go as deep as I'll go and deepen from the other side deepen the clearance hole further out because it really doesn't need all that part to be uh, threaded so, we'll figure out which one we're going to go with. Oh, a lot of people ask me what this is. This is just a ratcheting tap holder. Um, believe it or not, this one is from Harbor Freight and uh, it is made in Taiwan. It's around 18 bucks, I think, is what I paid for. Uh, it works pretty darn well. It's, uh, it's definitely better than a Chinese quality. If you want to build yourself a tap follower, uh, there's a gentleman Dudley Toolwright. He has a YouTube channel and uh, he has drawing for this. This is the one that I made using his drawings. It may be a good lathe project for you. Plus a great YouTube channel to check out. Dudley Toolwright. I took the tap to the bench grinder and ground the shank. This is a really cheap tap anyway, so gives me opportunity to upgrade. Time to order a new M6 tap. Okay, we're gonna drill and countersink two mounting holes. We're only gonna fasten this on this side because that side has to be able to move freely. I'm gonna just uh, drill 932nd 
and uh, we'll go with a 3 8 inch countersink for the head to sink down. Now, what I'm about to do, don't tell anybody, okay? It's our little secret. Yes, I'm gonna hold an end mill on the chuck dr uh, drill chuck. Just because I'm feeling lazy. And remember, there's not gonna be an axial load. Just going up and down here, so. See? Nobody died. No kittens died. No unicorns died. We're okay. Just don't tell anybody. There you go. Our little secret, okay? I took it to the bandsaw and made the slit. Now I'm using a couple of hand files to uh, deburr the joint. Feels good. I got it clamped onto the quill. The magnetic base is holding it level with the top of the tail stock. We use a punch. Now number seven drill bit. The blue thing right there, you see, it's called PDI, Precision Depth Indicator. Chamfer the hole. I've been trying these Kodiak tabs. Uh, you can find them on Amazon, they're made in USA. It seems like often I need a new end mill or a tap or whatever and uh, I don't want to wait five days to a week to get them shipped. Well, Amazon Prime has these Kodiak brand. Uh, I've had very good luck with their end mills and taps and like I said, they're made in USA. Okay, got that one hole, one bolt on there. Let's do the other one. Very smooth, unlocked, moves in and out. You wouldn't believe that it's on there. Locked, Just, it's not moving. Awesome, so now we're just gonna soften up the edges and call it good. The surface grinder. Pretty good, huh? I just softened the edges on the disc sander. Well, I say that's project done. Nice and smooth. Well, it turned out pretty good, and it's another one of those projects that makes you go, why didn't I get to it sooner? Anyway, it's done. It works great. It looks great. 
the nice finish of the surface grinder is just over the top. So I appreciate you watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.